Look at this. You just whip. Live weather. We have live traffic. We are back at it again at Whole Shot Power Sports. Fleming Island, Jacksonville, Florida. But this time, 2024 Challenger Dark Horse. So I was so impressed the last time I was out here with the Indian Scout Rogue that I asked to ride more stuff, just being honest with you guys. And this thing is actually impressive. I can't even get it in like frame. This thing is massive. But this is actually the first bagger on the channel and I'm actually really impressed. Let's go take this big, let's go take this big sucker for a ride and see what happens. 2024 Indian Challenger Dark Horse. What I just learned, the Dark Horse nomenclature means everything's blacked out. I like the dark horse. All right, here we are. Cadillac on two wheels. <laughs> this bike is massive compared to what I ride every single day. But it doesn't feel massive, man. First 30 seconds, it's quiet, it's smooth. My knees and legs don't feel the vibration here in the tank. Nimble. For the size of this bike, that is impressive. I can't feel it, man. Turn into this neighborhood here, get a nice feel for the slow speed stuff. We're just gonna take it around this little loop, get some nice little turns in, feel the weight. But honestly, I don't know how big this bike is, but however big it is, it doesn't feel like it. It doesn't feel like as big as it is. Honestly, this bike feels fairly light, man. Strange to say that a bike this big feels flickable. Look at this. What is this? <laughs> Why is a bike this big flickable? That is intense. I feel totally confident, honestly. Don't get me wrong, like I've been ridden, I've been riding a long time, I've ridden big bikes, I've ridden little bikes, but the size of this bike, you would think that it was more difficult, but it's not. It actually feels very nice. I'm not manhandling the bike, I'm not pushing the bike around. It is just doing what it needs to do. I'm cruising, it's cruising, we're both just chilling. Watching out for these leaves, because obviously this big bike will slide. This bike is actually fairly impressive, man. It feels sturdy, it feels well put together, just like the other one. This bike, I will tell you, has more heft in the shifter. This bike, when you shift it, it's very similar to the heft that you expect from, you know, its competitor, the Harley, but it is firm, yet smooth though. It's not clunky, it doesn't have like a resistance point that you feel, it just is hefty in the shift. Did I mention that the kickstand's better than Harley's kickstand? Gear indicator, speedo, tack. I love myself a separate tack. I like seeing the RPM needle dance. That's my personal preference. Go ahead and throw this thing into sport mode. Click that button right there. Sport, touch screen with a glove friendly display. Back to the GPS so I know where I'm going. A little bit later, I'm gonna have Das talk to you guys a lot more about tech features and stuff like that because he knows a lot more about this bike than I do and honestly, his presentation is spectacular. You guys will see. This man is awesome. Pop it into first gear, see what sport mode has to offer. Oh man, there's a difference already. I can tell. The difference between sport and standard is substantial. Wow, this bike is wick for its size, man. I don't know what the camera can see. I'm gonna try to get really up right here, but this bike moves for its size. Like this is actually really impressive. We'll go ahead and pass this guy. No problem at all. Very little throttle input. Honestly, you do not feel the weight. I know this thing has cruise control. Let's go ahead. I'm guessing you click it, set. Set it and forget it. Cruise control. Click off, turn it off. Click it in, turn it up. Oh man, this is exactly what you would expect. Obviously, I feel no wind, but if I did, I hit this button right here. Windscreen all the way up. Windscreen all the way down. Man, that is impressive. This bike gives you a lot for the price. I was instructed to turn traction control off. So, we're turning traction control off. The acceleration on this bike is effortless. Obviously a big torquey bike, of course it's gonna feel effortless, but it actually gains speed on top of the acceleration being effortless. That's impressive, man. Got good storage, pops up, locks down. Same thing on the other side. All right, third gear through a long bend. Honestly, this bike is hefty and sturdy, man. It feels good. Maneuvering the weight around, like even mid-turn, I'm still back and forth mid-turn. And it feels nice, it takes it. I will say, you can tell the size in the brakes. Smaller bikes have a lot more bite to them in the brakes. 
but it's actually still stops. I mean, it really stops for the amount of speed that you can get out of this bike. It's just in the front brake, you can tell that you're stopping a big, massive bike. Same thing in the rear. They grab real nice, they're firm, but it's a heavy bike and you can tell that it's a heavy bike. So it's like stopping an SUV, like regardless of what you do and how good the brakes are, it's still an SUV. This is a uh, the SUV equivalent of a motorcycle. Dude, these pipes sound real nice for a factory exhaust. That's a nice, that's a nice sound for a factory exhaust. So yeah, those were my initial thoughts on this big bike, but let's see how she moves. B, let's see, let's see. I was instructed to turn traction control off because it ran better, so here we go. Yeah, this bike has no business being this fast. A bike this big has no business being that fast. <laughs> that is impressive. And just so you guys are aware, obviously it's not sport bike fast, but a bike this big carrying that much speed that quickly, that is impressive. And this is a factory bike with a factory exhaust. It doesn't have a tune. It doesn't have anything to make it a little bit more quick and snappy over factory this is 100% stock hell the bike has nine miles on it it's not even fully broken in yet and that was actually impressive rear brake stops the bike it feels good you put pressure on it and it stops again yes it's a big heavy bike and you can tell it's a big heavy bike it does not stop the same way that a light bike does but that is simply due to the weight not because the brakes are not adequate for the bike honestly besides all of the real estate in front of you the bike actually feels a lot smaller than it is I, this bike has to be every bit of 900 pounds but you can't tell you can tell how big the engine is in the throttle response not that the bike isn't responsive but a lot of times the very large displacement engines um, similar to this and you know the stuff that harley has to offer it's not really quick revving it's not really quick revving because of how big the actual engine is obviously this is the case with this bike but it's fairly snappy actually um once you get it going it just takes a second to get off of the get off of idle but once you actually have it revved it actually responds fairly quickly and it revs back down at a decent level honestly it's it's very responsive for the size engine that it is being a big twin four cylinders and stuff like that they're going to be a lot more responsive but honestly solid response kick it in gear nice and slow here hell yeah man this bike accelerates effortlessly it's like i'm honestly only giving it like five to ten percent throttle during this and here i'll slow down a little bit we're in fourth gear 40 miles an hour just over 2,000 rpms i'm gonna give it a tiny tiny bit of throttle that's it and we're picking up speed i haven't given it more throttle it's accelerating with like 10 percent throttle which is actually really, really impressive. So you don't need to give it a lot and you actually get forward motion. The beautiful, beautiful thing about torque. You wanna see something funny that I just realized that's very strange, but it's funny. All right, I'm gonna lean from side to side. Look at the, look at the GPS screen. The GPS screen moves when I lean. <laughs> it's trying to predict where I'm gonna go, but I'm just going back and forth. That's kind of funny. Honestly, this bike has torque acceleration. You twist the throttle, the speed starts to pick up. You don't feel it a lot in the seat of the pants, like you're not getting pushed back into the bike, but the speed is increasing. So when you look down and you see how fast you're actually going, it's very interesting because you don't feel it as much in your body, but the bike is actually accelerating quickly. Yeah, that's still pretty impressive. Let's see, third, 50 miles an hour, 3,500 RPM. Yeah, that's, that's fairly impressive. I mean, it's it literally, it's not a sport bike. It's not gonna snap you back into the seat, but compared to the size of the bike, look at this, you just whip. That's solid. Let's turn traction control back on. I will say this, the seat is a little bit firm. I would like a cushier seat, but it holds me in place. It's cupped kind of like this. So I'm actually sitting in the seat. I don't really have a need to move around floorboards are awesome obviously my feet are just sitting here i am 100 percent comfortable on this bike i would love to get a lot more miles on it but again brand new bike gotta keep it somewhat short and 
it's solid man honestly i am fairly impressed it's a light nimble bike obviously for the newer variety of rider you're gonna tell how heavy it is i ride a bunch of different bikes all the time so honestly my personal magna it's a 95 honda magna is very top heavy that bike is three or four hundred pounds lighter than this bike and it feels heavier dude even this turnaround nice and easy nice and smooth Again, this bike has no business being this fast. Wow. Listen, I, it's not the fastest thing in the road. It's not, I have faster bikes, but the fact that this bike is this size, this big, and it moves like that, what? What? <laughs> I don't know what this thing is. All right, so apparently I should be able to hit this and turn up the volume. I don't know what's playing. This is, this is nice. Music on, 60 miles an hour. I can hear it, I can hear it clearly. It doesn't sound distorted even through the helmet, which is actually fairly cool. But honestly, man, I'm moving this bike around through traffic and it's big, don't get me wrong. I know it's big, but this bike makes you wanna hoon around on a big bike. <laughs> this bike really does make you wanna hoon around on a bigger bike. In just a couple minutes, I'm gonna get my man Das to talk to you guys a little bit more about the features and the tech of this bike because there's a crap ton more than I didn't discuss. Honestly, I just like going over the field, the acceleration, the brakes, how it feels in the body. It's a nice seating position. Honestly, I could ride this thing all day. The seat's a little bit more firm than I would like, but for a big bike, it's solid. It's impressive. It is a lot more nimble than I expect. All right, so here we are again. Got my man Das, except this time he is going to talk to you guys a lot more about the tech features of the Challenger Dark Horse because he knows a lot more about it than I do. Hey, and honestly, so everything that this Challenger Dark Horse has is identical to all of my heavyweight bikes. So my Chieftains, my Roadmasters, my Pursuits, we have identical setups. A little bit more different, you know, for fork mounted versus fairing mounted, uh, but all of it's gonna be identical. So with our Ride Command screen, we've got split screen options. We've got our navigation information, three widgets. We've got our vehicle information, your TPMS sensors, front rear, your service intervals, your gas, voltage, all of that, three more widgets, final screen, we have our ride information. So if you're tracking your iron butt information, you wanna go how long you've been, your stop time, your elevation changes, all of this. And it saves it to your account. So if you wanted to share that ride with somebody else, somewhere you've never been before, you can actually go ahead and just upload it out. Give that ride to somebody else, but hey man, take this ride out, a lot of fun. With our full screen navigation package, we have cell phone modems in these bikes. So we have live weather, we have live traffic. All of that displays right here on the screen. So in real time, we'll actually be able to see our weather bands just like on your radar app. So it's gonna move around letting us know, hey, this little cell is moving south right now. Maybe we're gonna go north before we head west. Awesome information, and as we zoom in, this is a glove compatible touchscreen, or I can run everything right from the driver's controls, nice and easy through here, and it's actually gonna give us all of our live traffic information. So hey, we can see Jacksonville, little, you know, a lot of traffic in there, as typical, but we know not to go through 95. It's gonna be a lot easier. Our next option, we're gonna to go to our music screen. From the music, nice and easy again from the rider controls. We can up and down the volume here. We can go ahead and change our different tracks, our presets. If you're listening to blues, you're gonna change all of your presets on the phones. Pushing it in, use the system. So you don't have to worry about volume up, volume down. Everything's nice and easy. But what's really nice, Apple CarPlay functionality. Android guys, I got you too, man. We can get Android hooked up on this with Android Auto. So right from your cell phone, mirror all your favorite apps, Waze, Google Nav, Apple Maps, whatever you want, I can put it on this screen for you. Make life easy. But you want to talk about comfortability? Let's talk about that screen. Two taps, sends that sucker all the way up automatically. Two taps down, brings it down, or we can go ahead and set it exactly where you want it, right in the middle. Get rid of that helmet buffeting, get rid of everything. And we're gonna bring it all the way back down because it looks a lot better too when she's down. Up here, all push button start, key fob entry with these bad boys. So what that also means is no physical keys, no turning anything, your key fob has lock and unlock buttons, which will hit both of your saddlebags, your trunks, all of that. And we've got built-in keys for your fork locks. All nice and easy. But you lose the key fob, guess what? I've got a master pin backup. So you can always get home safely, no matter what. All this tech comes with great responsibility. So if you're not riding for about a week or so, we've got built-in battery tender ports right there in the dash. So it also means you can use that for your heated grip accessories if you want to. Go ahead and warm up in these colder dimes, or I get you some heated grips, heated seat, or here in Florida, 
We could even do a cooled seat option for both driver and passenger. There's nothing like a cold rear on a hot day. Coming up front, we got our cruise control, push button stop, push button motor, nice and easy. And from the riding position, I never have to leave the comfort of that home base. So I can actually go through my navigation, bring up my points of interest, and let's just say I want to get some food and drink. I'm going to go ahead and navigate maybe down to Corky Bells. It's right down the street here. We're just going to scoot on down. Corky Bells right there. Hit it in. I've never left that riding position, and now I'm on my way. Keeps life easy. No matter what screen I'm on, my directions are always there, so I'm not going to get lost. Come on down. Find out why technology is what Indian does best. I told you, I can't deliver that like that. He just gave so much information, such a short amount of time. If you need any more specifics, reach out to my man, Das. Whole Shot Power Sports, Fleming Island, not Jacksonville, but Northeast Florida. They do service Northeast Florida. They service Jacksonville. I will actually link his information down below for direct contact if you have any questions for him. Again, appreciate you, my man. I appreciate you coming out. Absolutely, my man. Thank you.